Hello everyone and welcome back to It's Tech Time. For this video I moved my microphone a little bit because some people had trouble hearing me so hopefully this is a little bit better for you out there. But in this video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be launching our first container and I will show you the entire process. But before we get started it's important to note that Proxmox uses Linux containers or LXC for short but you will often hear LXC containers called Lexi by some industry professionals. I honestly don't know why it is often referred to as Lexi, but I wanted you to be aware of that. But the cool thing about Lexi containers is that they are more VM-like than any other container type. For example, with other container types, when you stop the container, it is deleted. So anything that you have saved inside of that container would also be deleted. Now the reasoning behind that is because a lot of times containers are created just for a temporary job and storage is mapped to them. But Lexi containers on the other hand are more VM-like, meaning that they will automatically save its state. So similar to a VM, if you shut down a Lexi container and then start it back up, your data will still be there, which is why people will say they are more VM-like than a container. Another thing to note is that Linux containers are not specific to Proxmox. Lexi containers can be ran on top of any Linux distribution you would like to. However, the cool thing about Proxmox is that Lexi containers are fully integrated into the web console, and we're going to dive into that right now. So we will be walking through the process of creating our very own container inside of Proxmox. But before we do that, the first thing we need to do is download a template. Otherwise, we will not have anything to base our container on. So first, we're going to click over here on the local, and you're going to see several different settings underneath local. And right here is where container templates would be stored at. And you can also click right here to see how much storage you have remaining on that volume. In my situation, I've barely used 6% of it, so there's plenty of storage left. So I should have no problem downloading a container template. So I'll click back over here at container templates, and then I'll go to templates. And as you can see, there's several different options to choose from here. For this video, I'm going to narrow this down to Ubuntu templates. And as you can see, it shows you several different versions available. I'm personally going to choose the Ubuntu 24 Noble version here, and then I'm going to click Download. And that may take a minute, so I'm going to pause the video. And so that's downloaded that template to my local storage, and now it's done. So I'm going to close this, and then here is my template that's now ready to be used. So now we will walk through the process of creating an actual container. First, we'll click up here at Create CT, and that will open up a menu allowing us to customize this container. The first thing it asks is what node you want this container to be on. In this particular case, our only option is PVE node 3. Now, if this was a cluster of more than one node, you would have more than one option here. And then below that, we have Container ID. And even though it says Container ID, it's the same thing as a virtual machine ID. Numbers that are done by default in consecutive order. And again, you can't have the same number you being used twice in two different virtual objects. And I am perfectly fine using the default next available number, which in my situation is 103. The next field is for host's name, and I'm going to call this one web server CT for container. And it's actually pretty easy to tell the difference between a virtual machine and a container, but I just added a CT for container just to make it a little easier for you at home, and I'll show you how it will look different when looking at your menu. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to create a password for this instance. Here you can add an SSH public key if you wanted to, but for now, I'm going to skip this and click Next. And here's where you would choose which template you want to use. So first, you would select Storage, which for me, my only option is my local storage. And then you click this drop-down menu for Template. And you will see the template we downloaded earlier, which in my situation is Ubuntu 24. You may have downloaded something different. So I will select it, and then I will click Next. For the root disk, it's going to default to 8 gigabytes, but I'm going to change mine to 16 and now we'll click next and just like virtual machines you can choose how many cores you would like to use in my situation i'm going to leave it at one core cpu but if you plan on using an application that's going to be using a lot of cpu you may want to increase that so i'm going to click next now for memory it's going to default to 512 but i'm going to increase that just so that everything runs a little smoother and then click next and here we have some settings for networking for my situation i'm going to set it to dhcp now you could set a static ip here if your environment is equipped for it and i'm going to leave the mac address to auto and if you've had vlans you can set them up here as well but this is all i'm going to do for mine so now i'll click next then under DNS, it's going to default to use host settings, which there's no need for changing that just yet. So I'll click Next, and then it's going to confirm the settings we made, and I'll click Finish. And that was pretty quick when compared to a virtual machine, so I'll close this. And if you look up here, here's my container. 
And just looking at it from here, as you can see, the container's icon looks like a box or a container when you compare it to a VM icon, which looks like a monitor or an iMac. And you'll be able to see the icon a little bit better once I start it in a second. But before I start it, I want to look at the options for it. And just like for virtual machines, I can change if I want it to start a boot or not. In this case, I'm going to select yes and hit OK. You can also set the start or shutdown order, but I'm going to leave that in the other options alone for my container. But I do want to touch on this unprivileged container. This was a checkbox at the beginning of the menu when setting up my container. And unprivileged containers are generally safer than privileged containers because a privileged container will actually have a user mapping that actually maps to the root account on the host system, whereas an unprivileged container doesn't have a user mapping mapping to the root account on the host machine. So it's literally contained within itself and separate from the host machine. In most situations, leaving this set to unprivileged container is going to be perfectly fine. I will leave it up to you to do some more research on that if you're interested. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to right click on our container. And I'm going to click start and then I'm going to click on console so I can watch it come up. And I did not time lapse that at all. It just started. There was no running text or anything like a virtual machine. It just came straight on. And containers in general are going to be faster than a virtual machine when starting. Now, it never actually asked us what we wanted the username to be, but the default username for a container is going to be root. And then it's going to be the password that we set up earlier. And then here we are. We are now logged into our container. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run apt install Apache 2. And I do not need to use sudo because I'm logged in as root, so I'll click enter, and it would help if I spell it right. And what this error message is telling me is that I need to first run apt update, and now I'm going to run apt upgrade. I'm going to go ahead and pass it a Y so it won't stop to ask me. And I'm going to pause the video since this will probably take a while. And now that that's finished, I'm going to up arrow to my install Apache command. I'm going to run it, Y to confirm, and it's started. So I'll pause this till it's finished. And it says it has finished. So now I'm going to run IPA to see what the IP address of my container is. And then now I'll visit that IP address in my web browser. And we've successfully loaded the Apache 2 default page from our Ubuntu container. Now one thing to note is that if we tried to SSH into this container as it stands right now, we would be unable to. So I'll show you next how to enable that feature for you. So we'll go back to our web server container and we're going to add a user. I'm going to add user ITST, give it a password, and I'm going to leave the rest of these blank, but you can fill these in if you want to, and then why to confirm. And I'm going to add this user to the sudo group so that they can run sudo commands. User mod hyphen A capital G, sudo for the group, and the username. So now I'll go to my terminal. And the reason why we had to add a user before we could SSH into our container is because, well, if you look at the screen right here, if I tried to SSH as root to the container, and then I'll put in what I know is my root password, it says permission denied. So I'll try it again. And again, permission denied. So let's try it one more time. And again, it's permission denied. But if I go back and I SSH, and I try to SSH as the user I just created, and then use their password, I successfully get in. And the reason why that didn't work is because SSH access for root on a container is disabled by default. So we had to create another user with pseudo permission, and then we could log in as that user to this web server container that we just created.